so thankful he could show up here on this afternoon. But we're going to be talking some Christian McCaffrey and the 49ers. They're facing the Chiefs this weekend. Going to break that matchup down a little bit as well. Stay tuned. What's going on, everybody? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I've got my guy Wayne Breezy here, and before we start, hey, I got a I got a guy here in the in the chat that I got to give a shout out to Johnny Dale's Football Academy. This guy drops a lot of good stuff both on Twitter and on YouTube. Be sure to hit this guy up. Nah. Uh, I'm I'm excited, Johnny. I might hit you up in the DMs because always like uh, seeing what you do. But Wayne, we got some nice news last yeah. night. The 49ers traded for Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. Obviously, all the emotion has huddled in for 49er fans. Let's break it down, man. How you doing? Look, I'm doing good, man. And the news was like a it was like a breath of fresh air. It was something that the faithful needed, man. We've been dealing with uh constant injuries and and and, and only through six weeks of football, right? We're only entering week seven. And I mean, if you go back to the beginning, man, it was it was is Trey Lance gonna be the starter? Is Jimmy gonna still be here? And lo and figure, like we're still here. Jimmy's here, Trey's injured, and now we're trying to continue to find ways to move forward and build also for the future. So I was super excited with this move. Oh, yeah, 100%. And, I mean, it's a great move, in my opinion, for the 49ers. I'm going to be talking about it. I know you have your thoughts, too. But before we get to that, got to give a shout-out to everybody that pops in. Obviously, everybody excited here. Got to give a shout-out to Paul uh Tara Dome for showing up as well nbn chan we've got joel eddie we've got a lot a lot of people here in this chat so thank you guys so much for tuning in as well as master chef with the two dollar super chat hey. hey we gotta give a shout out to master chef he says let's go fam i'm hype breezy i know you was hype yesterday i told you don't get off your cloud nine because it's a damn good move by the 49ers I agree, man. Listen, the 49ers found a way to uh, improve their team, uh, make the faithful happy. And more importantly, it sounds like Kyle Shanahan is ecstatic. I, I, I'm telling you, bro, he's finally got his guy. Yeah. And I mean, you you also just have to bring up the, the, the relationship. Mike Shanahan coached Ed McCaffrey. They have a strong relationship with the McCaffreys. And so this is, I think, a good segue to our first topic, the contract. Christian McCaffrey obviously has three years left on his th- uh, on his four year deal from uh, the Cl- uh, Carolina Panthers. Many people were misinformed uh, about the contract. They were saying the cap hit's going to be around eighteen nineteen million. That's false. The contract yeah. actually, Christian McCaffrey is getting paid under seven hundred thousand dollars in twenty twenty two, under seven hundred thousand dollars to play for the 49ers. Then he's going to get paid. $36.25 million over the next three years total with only $1 million of that guaranteed. That is a very, very cheap contract if you're talking about it for the 49ers and uh, in general for a guy of McCaffrey's caliber, especially with the guaranteed money. But because of that guaranteed money being only $1 million, there's likely to be a restructure. Do you envision any problems happening with that restructure in the offseason? Honestly, no. I think the restructure, it may even go down before the offseason because I think Christian McCaffrey put it out there. Like if he was traded, uh, he was willing to renegotiate or restructure. And you already know, like before Kyle Shanahan and then pulled the trigger on this trade, there had to be some type of restructure talks going into the, you know, into the near future. So there's a possibility that he may even get like not an extension, but his money gets extended Mm -hmm. out past the years of 2025. It's sort of like that backloading, you know, when it comes to the money. And they kind of do this with their veterans, right? They backload and then they have a lot of dead money that they pay in the the future. And so I wouldn't see that. 
look, that's the 49ers way. And right now the 49ers are looking to win a championship by any means necessary. So I'm sure they'll find a way to get it done. So that way they'll, they'll still have money under the cap to, to make other moves going into the off season. I think this was a, a win-win for the 49ers, whether you're talking salary cap, whether you're talking adding more talent, whether they're just winning in this particular way. Only, only thing we need Christian to do is go out there, execute. That's number one and stay execute, healthy, please. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, I mean, you're right, right? It, it's really the contract situation I'm not worried at all. When you talk about it, the 49ers, Christian McCaffrey has a good relationship with Kyle Shanahan. I'm sure he wants to remain in the Bay after oh, obviously spending oh. his years in Stanford, uh, mm -hmm. had obviously grew up in Denver, now in, uh, now in California here. I think he's going to want to stay in the Bay. And when you talk about that restructure, the 49ers have several different ways that they can go. McCaffrey has uh, a cap hit of $12 million next year, but you could also lower the base salary while upping the guaranteed money because McCaffrey will want more guaranteed money. I don't envision any issues happening with that. And you could also, like you said, there are several things you could do. You can add a void year at the end of the year, which the 49ers did with several of their free agents this year, adding some more that's if you create a signing bonus, you're going to add some more of that money towards the end of the contract, like you said, Wayne. So there are several different things that you can do, but regardless, I think the 49ers financially are fine with the Christian McCaffrey contract, and I think they get it at an at, uh, at a bonus in a way because the Carolina Panthers are covering a significant amount of the, uh, of the dead money in this deal. Yeah, it's for this year mainly, right? And so like the 49ers, it's a steal, right? 690k uh, to play the uh, the remaining what 10 games of this season. It's a it's a yeah. steal. And then you're talking playoffs. And so the reason why I think that the 49ers do some things, there's going to be some incentives. 49ers do incentive-based mm -hmm. contracts. And mm -hmm. so I can see something changing very soon, very shortly. And it'll keep Christian McCaffrey at bay uh, to keep the 49ers at bay. They'll, they'll be able to help each other out. Listen, man, you do this, we give you this. You do this, we give you that, you know? And so that's going to keep Christian McCaffrey going, being that he's a veteran. And we have all these other young guys that are still um, on the come up. But a lot, of people, a lot of people aren't talking about the fact that you got this veteran uh young veteran in here that's an all pro that's gonna yeah. only help shape this running back room to be an all pro room i love it man i really do yeah no definitely and i mean the second part right of the equation you talk about the financials what was the second part it was the draft compensation correct so the 49ers gave up a 2023 second round pick a mm -hmm. 2023 fourth 2023 third and mm -hmm. then a 2024 fifth round pick Mm -hmm. four mid-round picks Wayne, i gotta ask you is that an overpay for christian mccaffrey no because you i mean you got you guys got to think of the devalue of the picks so a lot of people like our picks especially when you go third fourth fifth because we we seem to have get high we hit home on those picks right so they seem to be valuable but a lot of other teams don't hit on the third fourth and fifth round with their picks and so you got to look at the devalue of the uh the pick where the pick is going to be in that round and so many things and so you know a second round pick for a first round pick it's a win in my book uh, again you, you look at who christian mccaffrey is you look at what he's done in this league and you automatically say i don't have to develop a the running back the, the running back is a very intricate piece to Kyle Shanahan's right. system. You want to see these play action passes. Well, you need a competent back back there. Christian McCaffrey is going to be that competent back. And on top of that, you don't have to worry about him developing. So I would have spent those picks. I thought it was going to only cost us a second and a fourth and maybe a player. But instead, we gave up some more late round picks, like I said, which devalue as the later you go into the draft. So this is a win for the 49ers. They didn't overspend. I don't care if he was hurt a couple of years, uh, a couple of seasons out of his six year tenure. That doesn't phase me like it will five year tenure. It, do, it doesn't phase me. I think you get him here. You don't overwork him like they did in Carolina. And he's right. going to be something that we've never seen before in the San Francisco uniform. And I think you 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 said it well. Yes, was the capital a good amount? Yes, but let me explain exactly why that capital, specifically for the 49ers, isn't as much as it would be for other teams. Here's what the 49ers have in 2023: they have two third round picks because of the compensatory formula that allows them to get a third round pick for Mike McDaniel and the second of two third round picks for Robert Sala. So they still have two third round picks. They have a fifth round pick of their own. They have a fifth round pick that they will get as a result of the loss of DJ Jones. That's two fifth rounders. 
Then they'll get a sixth round pick as a result of losing Arden Key and a seventh round pick as a result of losing Raheem Mostert. On top of that, they have a seventh round pick from Denver because of the Jonas Griffith trade last year and their own seventh round pick. So as funny as it sounds, the 49ers have eight, uh, eight draft picks going into the 2023 draft after trading three draft picks of their own. So mm-hmm. they are still very deep in this draft. And also the reason that it's all right for 2023 specifically is because the 49ers are locking up a significant amount of that starting core already, right? When you talk about it, their recent draft picks have allowed them, the success of them have allowed them to create a significant core to where there aren't really any gaping holes on their team right now. Yes, you can talk about the offensive line. You can maybe bring up center, right guard, or whatever you you might want to bring up. But overall, that offensive line right now is still a top 16 unit in the NFL. And that mm-hmm. defense is playing like an elite defense. They have made uh, they've made it work with replacement level players at certain positions because of how Kyle Shanahan and D'Amico Ryan's operate. So you still have a significant amount of draft capital or move down based on what the uh, what your preferences are. This is a deep draft class again, similar to the one that we just experienced, and that is where depth is valuable in this class. I think the 49ers are still in good shape in the draft in 2023. I think they're still in shape in the draft in 2023. And I think they're going to be in shape when it comes to the salary. Yeah. In 2024. I I totally agree. Um, Exactly. They're finding them. It's it's like the, it's like the front office is now in a rhythm, Mm -hmm. right? They're in a rhythm. Yeah. They they have their core. They have their players that they're going to continue to build with that they're, that are going to be pillars. Now you add in this sprinkle. You sprinkle in this quarterback. You get this guy. You get these guys to still develop, and they can keep drafting players to develop, not year one, but years two, years three, and still have ways to pay these um uh, other players off. Uh, and, and I think it's a great thing for the 49ers. Good move. Good move. Good, good move. And speaking of 23 – that's Mr. CMC's new number in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Matt Barrows reported that uh, Marlon Mack is moving to 36, which is kind of ugly for a running back, but it, that's all right because CMC is now number 23. How are you feeling about that? So I think CMC decided to say, you know what? I'm about to make a statement. So I tell you what, Jeff Wilson, keep your 22. No problem. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I'll tell you what, I'll take the GOAT's number. And so when you think of that, you're like, the GOAT, the GOAT is number 80. No, 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 no. I'll talk about Michael Jordan, like CMC. And I think he's a represent, I think he's a, a spokesperson for Jordan. I think that's the brand that he he's sponsored by. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. He took two, three. I love it. Uh, he's going to go out there and now he's going to make a statement to the NFL. Listen, they just put CMC with Kyle Shanahan. I just want y'all to let that simmer, saute, biggie all day in your memory one time. Just let it saute and simmer. They just put Christian McCaffrey with Kyle Shanahan, yo. He just went from the worst play caller in the NFL to the best play caller in the NFL. (laughs) That's crazy. And that's not even an understatement. Ben McAdoo is the worst play caller in the NFL. It's so predictable. CMC is going to reap the benefits now. Oh, my gosh. This is about to be legit to quit. Now, I do have a message saying that Carl Shanahan has spoke uh, uh, on KMBR, I believe, or 95.7. I'm not sure which radio station it is out there. Yeah, KMBR to this morning. Yeah. All right. And and he's letting everybody know, listen, man, don't get your hopes up, okay? Because like Kyle Shanahan said, he hasn't decided yet if Christian McCaffrey will be available Sunday. I'm calling BS. Uh, they will talk later today about his role. Uh, I believe that they'll do that. And Shanahan said that his physical condition is an issue. Uh, he practiced this week. So uh, I think Kyle Shanahan is trying to play a little game uh, with, um, you know, <laughs> he's trying to play a little game with Andy Reid and the boys, man. Listen, man, I don't know if he's going to play. We just got him, you know, but you better be ready because he's going to play on Sunday. So if Andy Reid is smart, he's he's telling, uh, what's his name, Spagnola, listen, be prepared for CMC number 23. Yeah. And I mean, it's cool. I just saw a video of Christian McCaffrey already in his uniform. He is actually on the practice field right now. He yes, isn't he like, did. he's not practicing today, but he's in uniform. It's uh very, very, uh, it's a good site for, for the 49ers in general. And one thing I wanted to bring up about Kyle Shanahan, you talked about uh, on Sunday uh, and really about this trade when he was talking on KMBR, 
when asked about the draft capital that he gave up, he said there's less than a 25% chance that the 49ers will have a player that they give a second contract to with that second round pick or with a third round pick or with a fourth round pick. Instead, they traded for Christian McCaffrey, who is a 100% a talent that they know that they give a contract to. What are your kind of thoughts on that kind of philosophy, especially because the 49ers have built through the draft? I'm going to keep it simple, stupid. This is a Kyle Shanahan guy. That's it. End of discussion. This is who he wanted. This is who he couldn't settle for because they had to build. They had to build. They had to build. So they have to pass over the flashy players. Kyle Shanahan has now got his flashy player. Sometimes you're going to spend money on your flashy players. You like the bling bling? Well, it's going to cost you some money. You want the Debo? It's going to cost you some money. You want the McCaffrey? It's going to cost you some money. I don't think they have a problem spending money. And I don't think they have a pro. Listen, we know they don't have a problem spending money, bro. Why? They spent plenty of dollars on D Ford, and he played two five games. Like I don't know. Like they just don't have a problem if they feel like they're gonna get a piece that's going to be like super important to the team. Mm-hmm. Christian McCaffrey is a super important piece. I know everybody wanted a defensive tackle because that's where it looks like where we're gonna struggle. But I'm telling you, we want to know why the offense was struggling. Elijah Mitchell not being here was critical. I love what uh, J- uh, J- Jeff Wilson Jr. has done. I love what these other running backs are doing. I love the the, the sp- uh, spurge, uh, we, surge we had with Tevin Coleman. I love it, but it's not going to be consistent. That's why they were later round draft picks and they didn't work. Like I'm, I'm telling you, now we have a bundle of guys and you pay your top guy always. Yeah. And I think that that's a, that's a good philosophy and the 49ers have done a good job of balancing and creating a uh, admirable salary cap for themselves so that they aren't stuck in cap hell, but they also are one of the big spending teams in the NFL. Christian McCaffrey now obviously is going to be a 49er. And we just con- confirmed in a way earlier this morning with, uh, with the KMBR call and with Kyle Shanahan, just confirming it's not just a one year rental which kind of brings us to no. the full outlook of this uh, of this formula. Christian McCaffrey is going to be great in 2022 with the 49ers. However, Christian McCaffrey... Oh, snap! We got 5K! <laughs> On the stream, too. That's freaking wild. Let's go! Let's go! Let's effing go! Okay, wait, wait, Thank you. I, I might be jumping yeah. myself. Huh? I think I got to do something special. Because he just got 5K, I'm I'm announcing it on stream. Because Wayne got 5K and I'm closing out on 1K, I'm giving away a Christian McCaffrey jersey. Hey! I'm giving away a Christian McCaffrey Let's jersey go! to everybody in the chat. It's going to come out soon. I'll put the details out on Twitter after this stream. I'm giving away a Christian McCaffrey Let's jersey go! in uh, because Wayne just hit 5K on the stream. That's what we're doing. Oh, my gosh. L- listen, guys, look, I, look, I, look. Yo, you know why I was shaking my head? I was I was lifting my arms. It had nothing to do with that. You want to know I have my hands up in the air? <laughs> I know you're like, is Breezy stretching? I was so excited that Mooney Ward was practicing today. That was actually what I was going to get to. But guess what? <laughs> <laughs> Screw all that. It. We giving away a Christian McCaffrey jersey. That's how we going. Wayne, congrats on 5K, brother. Thank you. And we're going to get you to 1K. Guys, we got to get Rohan to 1K, man. This kid needs to be monetized. Make sure you guys subscribe to his channel. If you got to create a couple of YouTube accounts, if you already got some just chilling, just go ahead and get that subscribe. That way you have three ways or four ways of not missing the show ever. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So that news aside, because that was wonderful news, and I'm glad it broke on this stream. And the jersey. Oh, game. hold on. Let me make a, let me make a, a quick a quick thing. Hey, Jeffrey, he meant that everybody in this chat will get a chance to win the jersey. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not if, everybody's uh, gonna get a jersey. Yeah, that's what you said. They they gonna hold you to it. So I gotta make sure I fix it. All right. I so if you're see watching everybody today's in the show, chat at all, so yeah, everybody in the chat will get a chance to win the jersey. We will figure that out uh, after this stream. But I love great you. great news overall here. And uh, congrats on 5K, my man. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Wow. Going back on the news for McCaffrey, we're talking about how it's not just a one-year wrestle. The 49ers, they set this up not only because Christian McCaffrey will be good in 2022, but imagine him, Debo Samuel, 
and Trey Lance all in the backfield in 2023 running that zone read. Christian McCaffrey is going to be good, not only for Jimmy Garoppolo, but also for Trey Lance. It's going to be nice. Why am I sitting here doing this? You got this, this, look, Kyle is winning now and he's preparing to win for the future. You got a quarterback on a rookie contract that you don't have to pay that super amount of money to. And if he doesn't happen to pan out, you walk away and you get another one, right? Look, I'm telling you right now, but this move right here and a lot of the moves that they're making are setting up for years four, three, four, and five of, of uh, I was about to say Colin Kaepernick, of Trey Lance. Years three, four, and five of Trey Lance, right? So coming into year three, coming off this injury, look at the pieces. We're not going to call them pieces anymore, Rohan. You know what we got to call them? we calling them? Pillars. We're calling them pillars. Okay. Pillars. Staples and the 49er community. Pillars. I'm setting my pillar here. I'm setting my pillar here, my pillar there, my pillar there. And what do you do with pillars? You build a freaking house. You put the rooftop on them. I'm telling you right now, Kyle Shanahan, John Lynch, Adam Peters, uh, Parag Marate, the whole damn front office, they're on one right now, and nobody is understanding what they're doing except for us. I'm telling you, they're building. They're not building a house. They're building a home. I'm telling you right now, that's what's going down. Yeah, yeah. And, I, I mean, I think that the 49ers are going to be uh, in good shape, not only for now but the future. But worry about the future in a little bit. We got to talk about these injuries and the new injury report for the 49ers. So here's some new uh, new news, Wayne. Kyle Shanahan just reported that Jason Verrett will not be activated from the physically unable to play list to, uh, this, uh, this week. Will happen only next week, likely. The deadline to do so is Wednesday. That means Jason Verrett will not play this Sunday. Okay. Now, Traverius Ward, on the other hand, is uh, questionable with an injury. Same as Talano Ufanga, who was in the concussion protocol with an injury. And so what does this mean for the 49ers? Here's my here's my thought. I want I want your opinion on it. I think this means Charverius Ward's good to go. Despite the questionable, I think Charverius Ward's going to play. And I think they're giving Jason Verrett an extra week because Charverius Ward's going to go. And they'll put somebody else opposite of Charverius Ward. What do you think? I think I'm going to add that and then raise it to another level. Uh, this comes down to to uh, uh, terminology and the contracts and all this different type of stuff with the with the PUP. The fact that they don't have to activate them right now and they can wait till next Wednesday to activate them off the PUP is the reason why they're leaving Jason Verrett on the PUP. All right, and then pretty soon he'll be he'll he'll have to get pulled up. I'm with you 100. I knew Mooney Ward was playing the moment he tweeted after the game on in Atlanta. You better not let these Kansas City mustard and you catch up people coming here wearing those colors i knew for i knew right then he was gonna play listen i don't care if he doesn't practice for the remainder of the season he doesn't have to he's a veteran that told that showed you he can lock down and so listen you have him out there oh my gosh man now, just erase juju smith schuster unless you put him in the slot that's the only way i see him getting over not worried about marquez vandez scoutland scatland not worried about these guys markel uh marco mccall Hardman, now that's different. They're going to probably try to put him in the slot, get him out there, get him down the field. But look, Mooney Ward out there lets this team just be that more dominant in the secondary. Now I'm less worried. Sounds like Jimmy Ward's going to get the thumbs up. <laughs> no pun intended. He's off uh, the injury and, and report. He's gonna, that's a good sign. Off the injury report, which is good. Now the question is, if here's the question, because if Ward is out there, that means are we starting Lenore again on the outside? It's it's unknown. That's the that's the big question because Dante Johnson will almost assuredly now be activated for the second straight week uh, off the practice squad. Uh, it will be a second activation. He will likely be active. Lenore will be obviously playing, but we don't know if that's going to be on the outside or the slot. Last week when Trevorius Ward was out there, Lenore was outside, uh, and Dante Johnson was in the slot, and then when Ward went out. Uh, Lenore was outside. Samuel Womack was outside with Johnson in the slot. Could we see the similar uh, a similar formation this week, or will the 49ers change it up? 
I, I wonder. Uh, that's a good question. I wonder because I'd assume Johnson does have a little more speed than Lenore, and they got a couple of deep burners. Sky Moore is there. Uh, Valdez Scantling is there, and Lenore is also seeming a little more comfortable now on uh, in the inside, given that he's played there for a little bit. Yeah. <sighs> I just don't like the inexperience. And I think that's the part yeah. that kind of makes me quiver just a little bit. Like uh, there's just a little bit of inexperience. You saw Samuel Womack get abused. He got abused by Marcus Mariota. I do not want him getting abused by Patrick Mahomes, mm -hmm. who's that much better than Marcus Mariota. So, I mean, it's unfortunate, but we're going to have to go out there with who we have. Look, I wouldn't be surprised to man. Line up Jimmy Ward out there, but all you got to do is go out there and make sure the person don't catch the ball. It ain't like he can grab a person or anything. He's played corn. He's played in the slot before. Let's see what happens, though. It should be a really good game, really good matchups, but I do believe, like you said, Ward will be playing, and I'm not talking about Jimmy. I'm talking about Mooney. We, they both, they, they be both playing. playing. The psych ward should be back, baby. They both playing. The psych ward. That's, that's how it is. So injury report-wise, Ark Armstead was ruled out as expected. No uh, Jason Verrett, as uh, as I just said. There's only two players on the injury report with questionable. That is Traverius Ward and Talano Hufunga. Here's the list of players mm -hmm. that came in this week with injury that are now not on the injury report. Samson Ebucom. He is now not on the injury report. He had the Achilles injury coming in after uh, going in and out of last week's game. Mike McGlinchey, calf injury, not on the injury report. Nick Bosa, the groin injury, not on the injury report. Drake Jackson, knee injury, not there. Trent Williams, ankle injury, not there. Demetrius Flanagan Fowles, Tyler Croft, and Charlie Warner, all had injuries of their own, and they are all healthy going into week seven against the Kansas City Chiefs. I, y yep. <laughs> like, look, we're coming in there healthy. We're home. We're home. We're healthy. Okay. We're home and healthy. Hey, you know who else is not on that injury report? Nick Bosa, some of these defensive players, just guys that you just, you know, were worried about that were limited in practice, that didn't practice too much. They didn't have to. Listen. All guns are on deck. Unfortunately, we lost Emmanuel mostly for the yeah. season. He's the only piece that we're going to be missing out on. Uh, and look, top defense is back out there, in my opinion. I know we're missing Eric Armstead, but listen, we got with Nick Bosa playing, watch the defensive interior play that much better. Just, just watch. Look at the and the main reason for this week, and then look at the film during go. this week. That's just how it was. That's all I'm yeah. Gonna do. I, I, that's all I'm going to say. I don't think there was too much of a difference between Carolina and Atlanta's, you know what I'm saying, offensive line. I think their offensive lines are probably pretty much equal. It's just that we were missing the force on the outside, which didn't allow the force from the inside to do what they needed to yeah. do. Watch the difference. Yeah. Master J coming in with the super chat, the $2 super chat. We appreciate hey. you hit big time, man. He's saying Niners all day, baby. Everybody in the chat's hyped. It's great. The 49ers are obviously on the uptrend now. And I got to ask you this question just to ask it, even though I know your answer, Wayne, are the 49ers winning the NFC West now? Absolutely. They already won the NFC West. I'm putting it in the mark in the book. It's done. It was done before the season started. Look, everybody was like, Oh, the Rams are the team to beat. And I get it. Respectively. They won the super bowl. We demolished the Rams. We're going to demolish them again in a couple of weeks. I'm not, if you watch that Arizona game, come on, man. Come on, two defensive touchdowns. The Saints suck. That's I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm not worried about Arizona. Seattle's probably gonna be the one team that's gonna give us the run for the <laughs> like this. It's just the one team that's gonna always be the thorn in our behinds. But guess what? We beat them bad, like they stole something too. Am I worried about the 49ers? Find a way to stay healthy and find a way to continue to execute. They win the NFC West and they place well in the NFC. That's how I look. Yeah, at it. I, I think so too. I think the 49ers, I pegged them to win the NFC West this year. And I'm not a I'm not a, 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 a clear fan like everybody. I try and be as objective as possible. I had the Rams winning last year. That's my truth. Uh, that's my honest truth. For I sure. thought the Rams would win the NFC last year. But For given sure. the 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 way that the teams were form uh, formatted this year with the amount of players the Rams lost, I thought the 49ers would win the division at the beginning of the year. Trey Lance obviously now injured, but regardless, I still think that that's the case right now. And I think that that's uh, 
going to be a big factor, obviously, now with Christian McCaffrey uh, entering the fold. The odds have now shifted to the 49ers being the favorites in the division. They've shifted, obviously, uh, to win the NFC overall and Super Bowl odds going from 18 to 1 to 14 to 1. Hey, did you know that Christian McCaffrey had a no trade clause in his contract with the Carolina Panthers? I actually did because I, I heard about it this week, but that's interesting. Um, if for being honest, it's, it's, I, I thought I think he would have waived it to any of the three teams involved. But yeah, that's another interesting factor. I don't, I don't, I, I don't think he would have. I think he waived it for the team he wanted to be. I think Christian McCaffrey wanted to be a 49. Really? There's a legacy here, guys. That's true. Yeah, you guys. You got to understand when you walk through, it's, you know, if you guys play basketball, if you follow the NBA, you know, there's some, some teams right now, they're hot, Golden State, they're hot. I get it, no doubt. But when you get an opportunity to walk through like the Boston Celtics or the Los Angeles Lakers, those, those two juggernauts of the mm -hmm. NBA where they have all the championships, when you walk through that door, you're just like, oh my gosh. And it's like what the, what the players feel like when they walk into San Francisco. They walk into that that shrine, that hall of fame, and they're just like, oh shoot. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like a shell shock. And I think once you walk through there, it's really hard to say, I don't want to be here. Christian McCaffrey has been doing it all his life. He's been doing it since he was a little kid. His father played here. Uh, and look, I really like what's going down. The fact that he chose this team, that's that speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, most definitely. And I think that. If, it, if it's likely going to be that he plays in the Rams game more. But I think even if he can make an impact in this, this game, it makes your offense more efficient in the red zone, right? Uh, you, you expect them to be implemented only in red zone packages. The 49ers haven't been as efficient as they were last year in the red zone. It makes you more efficient because it provides you with more opportunities. And you can't wait, obviously, for Kyle Shanahan to be able to utilize different personnel, right? You can have 11 personnel with Christian McCaffrey outside. You can have 21 personnel and you go empty sets and now two linebackers are going to be on two running backs, right? You have so many different ways mm -hmm. that you can scheme now for Kyle Shanahan, who has done already a tremendous job in, in scheming with his current personnel. Now execution should increase with another asset on the field that has shown the ability to be a receiver and a running back. So it's a good news all around. <laughs> just listen to this chat. Please don't make Celtic talk with my Niners. I'm just talking about as far as legacy, man. Like it's it's a legacy thing. The 49ers are one of those teams. They're one of the pillars of the NFL that set the tone on how to be a championship football team. And we're trying our hardest to get back to it, right? We got the coaching staff. We got right now we got we got all pro players. I, I think we have more all pro players on this team than we've ever had in our entire yeah. 49ers career. Uh, life now the, the key to the players being all pros is the other players supplementing mm -hmm. them so we got to make the, that's why we need the complementary players you know the Jawan jennings and those guys not not taking away from who they are their game or whatever they just weren't top first type round talent right mm -hmm. but they're still an important part to this organization to this team we just need them to show up and show out as well it's not just the players we're spending all the money on we need the complimentary players that we're not spending all the money on to show up as well this team does that Psh, man good luck beating them yeah no it, you're right and I, I mean this in a way earlier in the year it i thought the niners had the roster to beat teams it's just can they execute i do agree now i think that that point services even more but i also think there's a smaller margin of window for lack of execution because the 49ers mm -hmm. right now, you have every piece. You have an all pro running back. You have an all pro left tackle. You have an all pro tight end. You have an all pro wide receiver at all three major skill positions. There is a top level talent at the position. Mix that Preach. with one of the best play callers in the NFL. I'm not talking head coaches. I'm not going to say Kyle Shanahan's elite, despite me thinking that he's a really darn good head coach, but he's one of the best mm -hmm. play callers in the NFL. Mix all of that Hands together. Down. You, there is the, the, you have to execute now. I don't think there's any excuses. And I think this is a wake up call to Shanahan in that with you have, when you have so many good players, you have to put now your best players on the field. I, I like your, um, your synopsis on Kyle Shanahan. I like the fact that you didn't call him an elite head coach. I agree. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I think he's a damn good head coach. And 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 let me tell you why. It's not all what he does on the field. We got to think about all the other coaches that are blossoming mm -hmm. under this guy reg regime. Like coaches go to other teams and they become successful. Right. Well, that's head coaching, right? Right. That's it's your head coach, you know, grooming you, developing you, and you and whatever. And now it's up to you to take that and go run with it and make it you now, right? And it's always been that way. For Kyle Shanahan, he's had to turn around stuff so fast, right? As far as his team, he gets to the NFC Championship. Uh, he gets to the uh, excuse me, he gets to the Super Bowl, his third year of his tenure, and they just couldn't pull out. They couldn't win, right? right. And then you get to the NFC Championship two years later, and you know it just it just don't win the game. Like it's, it's, it just comes down to a, a, a stinking play, and you lose by three points. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate. Now. We're back in the situation to where Kyle wants, like you said, that margin of error, it, it gives you a little bit of safe space in a way. Yeah. Oh, I can mess up here. But I'm really confident because we have the talent. Hey, Kali, we got better talent. Hey, yo, him and I was going back and forth. You was in the chat. I was in and it. We were talking. You better say, you co-signed what I was trying to say. I did. Listen, you can have talent. But it's about having better talent, <laughs> and we just got better talent. We just got better talent. Probably some of the best talent we've positioned under the Kyle Shanahan. We're just super liking what's going on. Uh, Kyle Shanahan can take this, and now he has to make this great. That's what he has to do. He has to take it, shape it, make it, and has to do it quickly because the 49ers need to get on that winning trajectory quickly because once they start winning, and those wins start coming in back to back to back. This team is going to be the talk of the town, talk of the league. And it's funny because the 49ers are normally a second half team. That's uh, that's just how they've been. They've been a pretty strong Mark, second half bro, team. Obviously, in 2019, they went eight and one to start the year, but they still finished the year strong. Uh, ended up going five and two. They're a strong second half team. And now this move kind of indicates that it's going to face following that same way. You're probably going to see a better second half than you see a first half, especially when you see home game after home game after home game uh, in the later part of the season. The 49ers in weeks 10 to 15. All home. Yeah. they uh, Week 10 is at home against the Chargers. You go to a neutral site in Mexico City, which many assume can be a home game because there are a lot more 49er fans there. Mm -hmm. Then week 12 is the Saints. That's home. 13 is the Dolphins. That's home. And 14 is the Buccaneers. That's home before they go to Seattle in week 15. So they've got a good stretch of home games there, uh, four, four or five in a row, depending on how you count the the Arizona one. And so it's a way to, for them to develop some consistency uh, and get uh, get going. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Kali. We got you. I Real quick, it. though, going back earlier in the chat, I like this question from Terra Dome. He asks, you got to go big nickel. Use Jimmy Ward, Talano Hufunga, Sean Gibson, uh, in the in the nickel, pretty much. The 49ers actually tried this strategy this past week, went aggressive, especially when Hufanga went out and Chilveris Ward went out. You saw Gibson and you saw uh, some other guys in the slot at times. What's your kind of opinion on this? Do you think that this is actually a formidable solution? And do you think the 49ers should rock with this? It's definitely formidable when you have the right personnel out there. And so you got to, mm -hmm. you know, we're talking Jimmy Ward now, Hufanga and Gibson, opposed to, you know, uh, Jimmy Ward not being in that equation because you want the better cognitive players to understand the concept. All right. right. I love Tavarius more if we're running that if we're running that dime and you want to bring a dime back around there and you bring Tavarius more. So he's only covering that top end of the of the safety, you know, spot. And if that ball is thrown, he's just sitting there waiting for something to come out there where he can go jump the route. That's where he's great. I feel like he still hasn't gotten the rest of the football he's not up to football speed when it comes to the smarts uh but look i like this concept i think you're gonna see this you want to take and eliminate travis kelsey because you want to force mahomes to go to everybody else hey right. beat me with your running backs beat me with hardman beat me with juju beat me with this guy do not let travis kelsey on tight end day have his way that's what the 49ers are going to do. Eliminate Kelsey. They win this game. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. And I mean, when you talk about it, 
I thought last weekend the strategy wasn't great because when you had limited personnel, especially when Kufunga was evaluated for a concussion early, it led to big gains. Olimide Zacchaeus, he's a receiver. You don't play safeties on receivers unless maybe it is Jimmy Ward. But he was placed onto Sean Gibson. Gibson obviously was uh, it was aggressive. It was one-on-one -on -one coverage. Gibson, as a result, played a little softer so he doesn't get beat burn over the top. And so it's a nice crossing route by Zacchaeus gets a 37-yard gain. You mm -hmm. have to do it with the correct personnel. Big Nickel can definitely work if you have versatile players. But like you said, it's based on the personnel. And the 49ers just got their most versatile weapon defensively back in the mix in Jimmy Ward. So I would expect to see Jimmy Ward go up against Travis Kelsey at times. But I also wonder, how are the 49ers going to combat uh, Steve, or sorry, not Steve Spagnolo, but Andy Reid trying to put Kelsey on your linebackers like Dre Greenlaw, because that's a favorable matchup for Kansas city just because of how Kelsey is. So I wonder how D'Amico Ryan's combats that and how much he utilizes Jimmy Ward in the slot with that club. That's a good question. It's a, I, I don't think it's a favorable matchup. I think it's a bang bang matchup. And I think, you know, some, you know, Greenlaw, Fred Warner, whoever has to cover Kelsey, they'll win some and they'll lose some. And, and look mm -hmm. that like, I don't think it favors Kansas City because I, I at the end of the day we have the best coverage linebackers in the game. It's mm -hmm. unfortunate Aziz Al Shire isn't playing, but even Demetrius Flanagan Fowles is playing good in, in coverage when he has to drop. Look, I like that matchup. I actually like that you brought that up. That is something that we can see if you have to put a linebacker on Kelsey, but you want to make sure you can get out there with your safety because if you put the big nickel out there, you're taking one, you're taking Greenlaw off. Like right, he's coming out if I'm not mistaken, because you're adding in the extra safety plus your other two safeties, then your deep, then your cornerbacks, and so you're gonna rock with Fred Warner um out there as your middle and on that play look we, that you mentioned was pretty cool right i i thought fred could have played a little bit deeper in his mm -hmm. in his coverage yeah. which would have like helped gibson out but it was because of the personnel and you're right they went big nickel it didn't work they got the match that they want i expect the 49ers to match I expect them to cover and match. That's what I'm expecting. Match your personnel up the best way you can. Don't get caught out and being in the wrong personnel. If they do that, I just really don't see Travis Kelsey getting the big games. He might catch the ball on the short game, but he's getting cracked. We'll see because Kelsey obviously continues to elevate his game. One of the best tight ends in football, if not the oh, best tight end, depends on how you rank your tight ends. But obviously Mahomes – a little bit of a different uh, a group of receivers now compared to when the 49ers faced him back three years ago. Uh, no Tyreek Hill. Miko Hardman is still there, but you have Marquez Valdez-Scantling, the rookie Sky Moore, and now Kelsey, obviously, in the fold. Different set of uh, uh, cornerbacks, or sorry, wide receivers. It's going to be very interesting how they kind of uh, devise a strategy to combat this, especially without the, uh, the likes of Jason Verrett, who will likely now make his debut in Week 8. Ooh, against the Rams. I like it. Do against it. the Rams. Against and, the Rams. And, exactly. Do the Rams get play on grass? Uh, no, they play on turf. Oh, uh, that's interesting. They play on turf. So maybe Verrett's inactive in week eight and then comes back Verrett on week nine. Play until after the bye. How about that? <laughs> he could. He, yeah, that might be the case. That might be the case. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. What's going on, Rudy? I see you out there, brother. Stay up, yeah. bro. Yeah, man. And... Before we end today's stream, because today, obviously, got to break down the Christian McCaffrey news, a little bit of the insight into the Chiefs Rams. Got to say one last time, got to give a big shout out. Everybody in the chat, I just want to see everybody say congrats to Wayne again, because he just hit 5,000. It's this goal I know he's been working for, and a goal he's been very deserved of for a while now. So congrats to you, brother, for hitting 5,000, and uh, obviously, only going up from here. We going up from here, guys. We going up from here, and I, I owe it all to you. And thank you, guys, man. Listen, I'm about to go ahead and get out of here. I gotta get ready for a show tonight. Uh, we're about to light it up out here. Uh, it's gonna be a good night. And then tomorrow, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, which I think is 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We are gonna do the Madden simulation, baby. So it's gonna be really cool, man. Make sure you guys tune in. Hey, first simulation with Christian McCaffrey at the oh, helm as well. In the game, he's loaded. I checked last night. Oh, McCaffrey's at the podium. Hey, thank you, Kylie. I appreciate it. I got to hear this guy talk. Yes, sir. So we'll end it here, guys. Again, uh, Wayne, great job on that 5K. And guys, everybody in this chat, be sure to stay tuned on Twitter because I'm now going to announce in favor of Wayne 
that Christian McCaffrey giveaway. That's what I'm going to do for everybody here. But make sure you guys uh, stay tuned on Twitter so you get a chance to enter the giveaway. But thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys next time.